What's up? I'm Joel Madden, and this is Artist Friendly. On this episode, I'll be talking to singer-songwriter, lead guitarist, lead singer, and front woman of the band Kitty, Morgan Lander. Let's go. That's my kind. I don't want no bad times. I don't want to have bad. Kitty's back. <laughs> big statement. Yeah. Yeah. It's a yeah. big deal. It is. I mean, I guess it is. Yeah, it is. Uh, yeah. I mean, we're we're really excited. Things things are happening. They're happening organically, and it feels a little weird, but I'm okay with it. Why does it feel weird? Well, I mean, we took such a long break. Yeah. It's a long time to be away, a long time to be like uh, normal. Yeah. You know, like completely, I mean, still making music and still yeah. working with musicians and things like that, but not actually being like a working musician. Out there yeah. on the grind, yeah. doing that thing. Yeah. I know exactly what you mean because mm -hmm. I feel like similar. Yeah. I feel like we, uh, I think it was like uh, 2000 and. 14 or something. So yeah. it was like 10 years ago. Yeah. We were like done. Yeah. N not as a band. We mm -hmm. all love each other. But like, I think you go out there on that grind and it's not, there's so much good things about it. There's mm -hmm. so much experience you have. You could call bad. You could call all, I mean, it's just a life experience. Uh, but if you, if you beat the horse, I feel like we were just beating the horse at, at, towards the end there of mm -hmm. that cycle of like 12 years or whatever, yeah. however long we were just grinding. Yeah. I felt like we had just whittled our souls down a little bit without knowing it. Yeah, I, I can agree with that. I think that's sort of where we were at as well. Like the last few years that we were touring, you know, things kind of kept getting more and more diminished. Mm. Um, you know, we had uh, switched labels a few years prior and, uh, you know, we put out I th what I think are two of some of our best albums, mm -hmm. but, you know, we were touring in a van. Uh, Which is hard. Yeah. The guarantees were getting smaller and smaller. Mm -hmm. The crowds were getting smaller and smaller. And, um, you know, you know that that can also weigh heavily on your psyche. Yeah. Um, you know, having to grind it out like that uh, night after night and feeling like you have to do it rather than like you want to do it. Yep. Um, and similar situation for us as well. Like we are all great friends. We were still at that time. There was no like interpersonal drama or anything. It was just a case of like just being tired yeah. and, and feeling the, tired. Yeah, the weight of, of almost like defeat. Um, just, uh. you know, from putting in so much and like sort of receiving so little. Um, and for us, it wasn't really like a conscious thing it just like kind of just drifted you know just kind of fell through our fingers like we didn't sit down one day and we're like uh you know let's break up the band or like we, there was no announcement or anything it was just kind of like you know we all just started to do our own things and find our own way and um it sort of just naturally kind of drifted that sounds right yeah um the thing that i think about when you say let's say the albums don't perform maybe like we hope they would. Mm -hmm. The shows aren't selling like the other ones were. To us, we take that as we're failing. Yeah. No one is there actually telling us the reality of the landscape we're trying to build in. Right, of course. Is that in the time, because I'm, I'm guessing this, this is around 2011 mm -hmm. for you, yeah. 2012? Yep. So that's when streaming f switched over. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We all felt it. We were in the same, it was the mm -hmm. same time for us. It, it, yeah. it, there was a hole, everything dropped off a cliff. Mm -hmm. And suddenly we, we kind of almost like woke up in a new world where bands don't actually have, it was like they were important for a decade. There was a real vibrant place to go and mm -hmm. be a band. And then suddenly it was like from 2010 or 11, to 2015 there was just like this this void yeah where mm -hmm. no one did well yeah actually very yeah. few did well yeah. it's um, a weird transition period it was weird and no one really you heard people say like it's over it, it, it's done that was the experience we had too it was, it was a it was a weird time it was like i, I love my band and I, it's not that i need everyone to love it but it's not over mm -hmm. but i feel like i internalized it as our failure versus a reality of the time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
And now we come to this era, which is almost you know, 10, 11, 12 years later, but really a decade later, it feels like there's this resurgence of rock music. And as far as the interest of like the most important fan to me is the new music fan. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Someone discovering music yeah. and going, what do I like? Who am I? Mm -hmm. um, what kinds of things do I like? Now it's a different day. Ki kids and, and fans and, and all music fans coming into music. There's no lines. There's no real genres. It's just like, I like what I like. Yeah. And most people, some people would call themselves rock fans. Mm -hmm. Maybe some people would say they're hip hop fans, but most people will, will scroll through Instagram and listen to any song. Yeah. And if we think it's good. If there's a cool dance we'll to it. We'll <laughs> bop our head yeah. to it and we'll be like, oh, that's cool. Yeah. So I don't think we were equipped or experienced enough to understand the global change that was happening and mm. see it for what it was. Yeah, for sure. That versus we internalize it as artists and we go like, I'm, I failed. I'm fa it, it was all for nothing. Yeah. Well, it certainly feels like a failure, you know, yeah. when you're, you're, you know, holding you know, you know, holding a mirror up to yourself and it's like, you know, did I, you know, what, what about what I have been doing, the music that we've been making, you know, the places that we've been playing is, is causing this right, to happen. Right. Um, and it's not, you're right. I've never thought of that before. It actually that wasn't it was you. A, yeah. It was a transition period just in the industry. Oh my God. I feel like I'm in therapy right now. This is so, so amazing. Thank it, you. <laughs> but, but this is my therapy. Yeah, so it is. Um, but no, that's important mm -hmm. if you don't think about it. Yeah. It's not that everyone lost interest. Mm -hmm. It's that the distribution system changed almost overnight. Mm -hmm. What you're telling me is a is so funny because so many bands from, you know, the late 90s to 2012 had the same experience mm -hmm. and I don't think any of us processed like what was happening at the time. Right. Yeah. Well, and that is really interesting. Like I I can't say that I've ever had a conversation with someone on that level to like explore that and yeah. kind of discover uh, that. But like, I can only speak for my own personal journey. Right. And, you know, it was like uh, we came off the road in 2012 and that was it. We just sort of drifted apart. Um, and yeah, I guess there was a lot of transition happening, you know, personally. Um, and for me having, a uh, normalcy mm. trying it out you know like yeah. so like you know getting a real job like i came i i didn't even graduate high school you mm. know uh we left uh school to start touring with kitty um and so i came home with like no ex real like real world experience and for me that has been a journey as well sort of discovering who i am outside of the band yeah, maybe that was important. my therapy i guess and just sort of like learning that, you know, the things that I do outside of music also have value that like, yeah. I know I'm an intelligent person and, and my uh, working on relationships as well is something that I think is a very difficult thing for people uh, in working bands to do. Like when you're out on the road all the time, you know, um, having, yeah, relationships are hard in general and then having to sort of deal with that, being away all the time and all the things that kind of come with that. So, you know, working on relationships also was a big part of that, that self-discovery thing. And I, I really am grateful for that time. And like, you know, back looking back in 2012, like in that moment, I was thinking like, well, this is like the end. What am I going to do? Right. Yeah. Um, but it's not the end. And every day you put your foot forward in front of the other and you figure it the fuck out. Um, and sometimes it's trial and error. Um, but I'm grateful for that experience, you yeah. know, having it's um, dope. Yeah, it is. Right. Like just figuring out like what, what life is really all about. It's not about, you know, uh, you know, what people are saying or, you know, fans and the adulation and all that stuff. It's just like, like life is just like, um, being with the people that you love. Life is just like eating chips and farting on the couch. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, like that's literally it. Yeah. Um, and, and, uh, sometimes, it's not as exciting as uh, as what, you know, people in bands and musicians sort of make it out to be, you know, the, or the, the movies sort of present it well, as, we you know, sell, life is... We sell a fantasy. We do. Yeah, absolutely. It's, yeah. Uh, it's wonderful mm -hmm. to think about a fantasy. I'd love to just live in a fantasy. That'd yeah. be great. But, yeah. but then no one would, uh, would like me 
and I wouldn't have any real relationships yeah. and I wouldn't have a, mm. a, a life I get up in and live inside of every day yeah. where I can uh, actually smell or taste or see or feel anything. Mm -hmm. And um, that is, a, in my mind, a terrible way to live. And some people live that way. I've experienced some people I've come across that had massive amounts of success but live in a complete fantasy. Yeah, they're trapped They're trapped in that illusion that has been built by the music industry and that's sort of where they live. That's not real. It's not, oh. and it's dangerous, mm -hmm. and I think it's sad. Mm -hmm. I have a refusal to judge anyone, so I'm, I don't make a final judgment on the people that I come in contact like that, but I, I do form an opinion, I think, mm -hmm. where I see something and I go, eh, I think you're really out of touch with uh, real life and there's something about real life mm -hmm. uh, which is why I tell people that are listening or people that uh, you come in contact with that are fans of your band or of music and they think the fantasy is real mm -hmm. I try to tell them it's not yeah. and I try to tell them how special their life is mm -hmm. and just as exciting it can be to have an experience that you might write off as not important because it's you mm -hmm. so I think a lot of us do that yeah it's not important because it's me. A night with really good friends or a good dinner somewhere that you really wanted to eat or a trip to somewhere that you really wanted to go should feel exciting and yeah. should feel worthful. Absolutely. Worthwhile. Like, yeah. um, but it is this fantasy that, that we get sold because there's something exciting about that. Mm -hmm. It's like Disneyland. I want to go to Disneyland. But if you were at Disneyland for a week, you'd want to leave. Oh, you'd be so fucking tired. Oh, my Done. God. Done. You'd be like, okay. <laughs> somewhere in the middle... We can take the experience we had in our younger, more formative artistic years and pick out the things that we actually do find value in and we mm -hmm. that we appreciate. Mm -hmm. Because I have a theory that we're the best version of us as a band than we've ever been. We're mm -hmm. better live. We're better at everything because of our age. Yeah, I, you know, I can agree with that. I think um, I know you as well started off very young, yeah. had fame very early on. Yeah. Um, as as young people and like your brain isn't even formed yet. You know I mean, what I mean? It froze me at a certain age and mm. I was really immature until mm -hmm. probably 30. I was probably like operating on a very limited, uh, a very limited development. It does that to you. If you whether think at 21 or something, you get everything and you're also coming in injured. You're coming in as an injured kind of person. Yeah, well, not um, even as a whole person, you know, yeah. like for us, we were... 15, 16, Crazy. 17 years old, you know, when, when spit first came out and everything just went bananas. Um, and, uh, yeah, like my sister Mercedes was in her first year of high school. It's crazy. When it was like, all right, time to, time to test out if this is the dream or not, you know, yeah. I'm like, I mean, I'm really grateful that my parents even allowed us to do that. Yeah. Billy was, uh, left on the road, didn't go to his senior year of high school. Yeah. He was just on the road with mm -hmm. us. And it was like, I think about it, it's crazy for him. Like, how did you, it, I was out of high school. I was a year or two out of high school, mm -hmm. but it was crazy. It was, it was, you just. How did we make it? <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, I am baffled uh, every day at the, the resilience, I think that some, some of us have, like, I know the industry is so tough. Um, it's, uh, there's a lot of predators out there. There's a lot of creepy people. There's a lot of people that there's a lot of exploitation, mm. um, and being as young as, you know, we were mm. experiencing things when you were young as well. Like it's, it's a wonder that we have come through, um, you know, all of that and been able to sort of be better people, you know, like I, I really am grateful for all the life experiences I've had, like the good or the bad. I certainly can look back and take take mm. the good from those and see the worth in some of the mistakes and, mm. and everything like that. Like being able to reflect back on my life in that way, I think has allowed me to see everything a little clearer and helped me to be the best version of myself. Um, and then of course that extends, you know, to the band as well. Like you were saying, like we're the best version of who we've ever been. And mm. I, I couldn't agree more. I think that like, that's where we're at right now. And being able to have this second chance, it's great because like we get to to have that chance, almost a do-over. Yeah, it but, is. But, it, uh, it is a do-over. Yeah, but with the best version of, of who you could be. And, that's and with like, all that amazing. experience, I don't know what experiences had the biggest impact on you 
good and bad, but to make sense of them is important. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, all the bad experiences you could have had that you may not even have accounted for at the time when you guys were like, okay, I'm spent. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go home. I feel that implicitly. Mm -hmm. I want to know what it feels like to live a real, a regular life. And I want to be a regular person Mm -hmm. and I want to have a relationship with my life. Yeah. I want to have, I want to be in the, com- in a community. Mm-hmm. I want to go to the coffee shop, yeah. take my kids to school. And now I have teenagers, but I feel extremely grateful that I got to do that. Mm-hmm. 